in the community. But first, we're going to talk about National Public Health Week. And joining me now is Dr. Hiram Polk, the commissioner of the Kentucky Department for Public Health. Dr. Polk, how are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. So obviously it is National Public Health Week, um, and we're going to get to that, what Kentucky is doing in a moment. But for the folks that don't know you, a lot of people know your name, but the folks that don't, can you give a little bit of background on yourself? Well, you know, I spent a lifetime as head of surgery at UofL, and, and it was a fun, great thing to do. You, sort of a different job, though, where you go from, you go from looking after one patient at a time or one group of residents or one group of medical students, and all of a sudden you're looking constantly at a million of the sickest people you can imagine. And that's the people that the Department of Public Health focuses a lot of its attention to. Really, there's about a million of our 4.5 million Kentuckians are, are really sick, undereducated, underemployed, a lot of bad habits. Things really set them up for real trouble. So how were you able to transition to that? I mean, that had to be a huge I, adjustment. It, it has been, and I've just I've just been a year into it, and and that's all right. It's different. You're focusing on population health. That's a popular phrase, but looking after what's best for the group is different than looking after what's best for a given patient. We go from doing the silly, most mundane things like check on the water, check on the milk, food production, things like that, and then you get into something as serious as Zika infection and profound as a heroin epidemic. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a crazy kind of job that shifts across really amazingly important to mundane things from hour to hour. Absolutely. Now with being National Public mm -hmm. Health Week, and we're talking yeah. about we're here in Kentucky obviously in your yeah. position, yeah. what is the state of Kentucky doing um, this week to honor that? Well, we're going to have a sequence of programs. I first of all I have to realize that we have about, about 300 people in the office in Frankfurt. I think what's more important is 3,000 people working in public health in the local health departments like Metro Jefferson County here has a big group of people. So we have about 3,000 people working on doing all the little things and all the big things. And we want to try to recognize them. I mean the people that work there are just first class people. Most of them have advanced degrees. They're committed. They work for, for a relatively poor pay on the state scheme, they work their brains out, and uh, they still go home, I think, satisfied that some of the things you're doing make a difference. Now, 52 weeks of public health is also being launched. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we're going to try to take, and this is so silly when you go from milk cleanliness to Zika to um, to uh, heroin, you know, you're going thing thinking some of those other things get missed. And we want to try to be take each piece of the public health department and let it be a focal point for a given week. So when you talk about Zika, you keep saying yeah, that, way. Yeah. and obviously in the last couple of years there's been a, a huge national scare. So talk about how that could have, uh, possibly affect our viewers with some of the rain we've had? Well, I, I think, first of all, it is rainy season. The whole idea, everybody knows, keeping mosquitoes out of your house is really sort of important. And as you do that, then, uh, you know, you've got to be sure there's not standing water. You find a way to evacuate it, empty it, cover it up. Um, the Zika virus is going to be here. It looks like about one out of every 10 girls who get Zika during pregnancy ends up with an abnormal child. That's a disaster because an abnormal child for eight or nine years, and frequently they die. Uh, it will come here. It's worked its way north in the United States from Miami to Georgia to whatever, and I'm sure we'll see it this summer. Well, I think that was a lot of the common misconception was people were saying, oh, it's only in the deep, deep south. It's only in Florida. That's not the case, and people it's need to mosquitoes. be aware. The mosquitoes that are here are, are capable genetically of carrying that. What's a great idea, some of the really creative research people have come up with the thought and idea that you can genetically engineer mosquitoes where they can't carry Zika virus. Okay. And that, that'd be the kind of thing, it'd be a huge impact. That would be huge. Yeah. Now, you t touched on this earlier, and I, I yeah. want to talk about it. The people yeah. from here in our community have seen the, the horrible impact of the opioid crisis, yeah. talking about heroin specifically yeah. right now. From a public health standpoint, when you sit in the seat that you've got, and obviously the important role that you have, talk to me about the crisis and what people can do to help. Well, I think first of all, awareness is everything, and try to get a little bit away from the stigma. People who end up using substances of one sort or another get in trouble, and there's a stigma about that. Families have trouble dealing with it. They have trouble dealing with their neighbors, everything. So a stigma is a big part of the deal. First of all, I, I think the thing that I'm most excited about is we've got a program that will start in August in some of our kindergartens, first, second, third grade, talking about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco to very young children. I think if we're going to cut this thing off at the pass, that's the way we're going to have to do it. you got to keep starting and, younger. Yeah, I start younger and younger. So we're going to try to do kindergarten to fourth grade. We've got about 30 schools in the state who expressed interest in starting this as a new part of their curriculum immediately this fall. 
And uh, wow. I'm excited over that. They've got some great different kind of ideas about how to bring, how to make children understand about all of those things, alcohol, tobacco, as well as, as, well as uh, the danger of drugs themselves. And with a little bit of that I know about the opioid crisis, a lot of times there's a stereotype of the type of people that end up using mm -hmm. And I think it's important, and you tell me if you agree or disagree, yeah. that people realize it can happen to anybody. It happens. I mean, the first thing is, is people need to understand the commonest people who get in trouble with overdoses are young white middle class adults. They often right. have jobs, they do this, this becomes a recreational exercise, and it's dangerous as it can be. You know, we did a good job of getting rid of some of OxyContin and those kind of things with the Casper legislation. Makes it really hard for a doctor to write a prescription for that. We had no idea, I think, that, that heroin becomes so cheap and so available on the street. That's, that's a huge problem. So when you look at the state of Kentucky, though, as a whole, the other health, health issues and the other things going on, is there? what are some of the other things that you've well, got going on? I mean, on? for example, they're upside down. For example, we're still the worst in the union in terms of, of lung cancer, lung cancer incidents, lung cancer death. Then you back up into smoking. Yesterday, there was something that said seven out of ten voters in Kentucky think we need to do something about that statewide. That's been an issue since I've lived here for 45 years. I bet it'll be an issue for times to come. But we need to bite on that bullet sometime. We've got to make changes, period. Yes. In this point, that's right. Time. Yeah, absolutely. So, Dr. Polk, if people want to find out more information uh, on this week and the 52 weeks and everything else going on with you, how can they do that? Well, the easiest way to do it is hit the .gov button on, on things and then hit slash public health and that gets us to us and we've got a decent website we've got wonderful help over there and trying to answer questions from people and we think there are lots of questions that ought to come up but we've got the people there to answer them all right <clears throat> dr polk it's an honor to meet you i really Pleasure. appreciate it thank Pleasure. you for being thank on the you show for having us in. all right well we'll be right back on wave three listens live stay with us